G'day everyone, Diesel here from Getting Around Isles Camper Trailer Travelling. Thanks for checking out our video today. Very exciting for me to share this one with you. A few weeks ago, we picked up a new car. The answer is yes, we're gonna be using a different car to travel, explore and four wheel drive around the place. Well, here she is. Alrighty, welcome to the build series. Been very keen to show you this one and very keen to sort of show you what we've done because those shots you've seen before about two and a half to three months ago, which was a lifetime for me because since then we've done a lot of work on the Ranger. We're currently about three and a half thousand k's away from Perth, so we have driven across the country and we've actually managed to test a lot of the gear on this thing, but I'll go through that one with you later in the episode. Very different weather conditions, you know, where I am now, it's about 16 degrees here versus when I recorded this, it was stinking hot and Everything was overheating, it was a very difficult time. Now, while this is about me showing you what I've done, I really hope you get something out of this. It was fairly challenging to record this one considering the type of work that I had to do, but I did my best and I would like to open up a conversation in the comments or direct messages on the socials. If you have any questions or if there's something I've missed, I mean, there was a couple of things I didn't quite cover off. Let me know in the comments what you thought, any questions you've got and any sort of feedback on your own experiences as well because you know we've all sort of got a different story to tell and i'll tell you my story at the end of this one but for the moment grab yourself a drink make yourself comfortable let's get into it cheers if you like what we do and want to see more content from us check out our patreon page where we currently have a seven day free trial available rightio now today i've got a diy install for you this one here is a twin heavy duty transmission oil cooler this one here I got from Wholesale Automatic Transmissions. I need to make sure I thank Adam for reaching out to me and telling me about this and offering it to me. Now, I sat on it initially because I'm a new Ranger owner. I didn't know much about it and didn't know if I bloody needed it, to be honest with you. Now, I, I talked to quite a few people and asking, when you tow, do you find any issues with your transmission overheating? And feedback was was mostly saying, yes, transmission's getting hot and overheating was definitely a... A weakness of the Ford you know, Ranger in Australia, that's for sure. A lot of people feel that the Rangers aren't really sort of made for Australian conditions and, you know, the type of towing and the type of climate that, you know, we sort of have to deal with and transmissions in Fords and then, you know, a lot of the newer Rangers is definitely sort of a weakness. What people were telling me was before they got an upgrade like this, effectively the, the transmission heats up the engine the engine gets hot, the engine cuts out and, and effectively goes into lit mode, which will sort of be enough to get you to the side of the road where your car can cool down essentially and, you know, you're pretty much sort of stuck there and you're hoping you haven't done more damage. As you know, we've got a big trip coming up and I thought, well, something like this is a preventative idea. We tend to travel and camp in summer. Yeah, 40 degree temperatures like today, it's the mid 30s, but towing in 30 to 40 degree you know, days isn't isn't an unusual thing and you know we're going to cross a nullarbor soon and we'll definitely be doing some long days towing and now this one here at the time we're doing this video will see you back 745 bucks these guys as well engineer design and get these all made in australia i'll chuck him up on the screen for you right now to give you a look but i'll chuck it in the description so you can actually sort of see for yourself what this is, basically what you do is you just jump on their website, chuck in the make and model of your car. It'll bring up the different options you have. Now this one here is designed to be a, a DIY kit to install in your driveway. These instructions, this is very bloody comprehensive. That's a, a 20 page document here with nice colour pictures, which is why I'm actually going to have a crack at installing this one today for you. Other than the booklet here if you have any troubles with this one and uh interpreting information or you get stuck or whatever you can call these guys up here there is a, a hotline number on the box here follow the prompts and actually talk to one of the guys there and get some advice and i've done that myself so what do you get in the box here two liters of um transmission oil fluid again this is their own stuff 
hose and conduit here so I believe there was five meters worth there this one here is the hose which has the conduit on it as well which is going to connect the two coolers J pipe P clamp other assorted clamps and a couple of plugs there you'll get to see those in a bit try and be careful with them it is designed for the range in the BT50 so if you've got a BT50 it should work for that as well there is another one here and here as well which is effectively the same thing but all right well that's enough the blah 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 it's time to get into it so I'm going to start with all the top bits here so basically this um not sure what it's called here but this sort of cover here has got these little five little points here and a couple of bolts on the end there which I'll show you I'm going to basically take this off here then I'm going to put the coolers in with the hoses and run the hoses through and I'll get all the stuff up here done first before I put the jacks up because I don't want to have to um, stuff around with the jacks I've got go jacks and it's a pretty good job to be playing around with those so Now it's these ones here, so those ones there, just clip onto those sort of hooks there and that's how it keeps in place. I only learned that because I broke the first one off. But there's a tip for you so you don't do the same. Okay, so now we've got the exciting part is taking off the bash plates here. For the moment, I'm gonna undo this one here, which is a couple of bolts here. And then another couple of bolts under there. If I can take this one off, I should be able to get the coolers up under here before I have to jack up the car and, and do the rest, but we'll see if that works. Okay, so the GoPros, um, unfortunately, uh, like us talking about the transmissions not being made for strain conditions, the GoPros are just getting too hot and they just both li literally overheat at the same time. So chuck those in the freezer and I'll finish off the job here. You haven't missed much. Now, all you missed was me struggling to get these hoses on there they're a very firm fit but the clamps are fixed on there as you can see and these ones here this is the really long one so basically it's in and out but that's going to be cut later now the instructions say it doesn't matter which way you do it whether it's from left to right or from right to left it is bi-directional now that's all put together there now we're just going to feed these up from the bottom here just so they sit on so we can do the bolts on at the top first okay so i've got them in here now but basically when it comes up put in that first bolt there but don't do it up super tight because you might need a little bit of wiggle room when you're doing up the bottom there and there's the other one there so that was the one that was previously in there so i just unplugged that and replugged him in there so as you can see underneath here now got these self-tapping screws so one two there try and make sure they're nice and straight and again same thing there and it's all up there now and now I've got this hose that I'm going to have to start feeding through here and okay so back here for another crack at this today's Sunday it was Friday I was actually here with you before and I got to a point where I just couldn't go any further it was also fairly difficult to record because it was stinking hot the GoPros just kept overheating and I might just give you an idea of the tools I'm using just so you know if you're going to do this what tools you might need because yeah, it was pretty annoying to, you know, I had to take Zach to um, cricket presentation and the car was on jacks. I had, you know, bash plates all removed or the bloody cooling cabling and hoses all dangling out. So I had to tie it all up and, you know, sort of abort the job. But so what I did need was this one. All these little bolts here. So these little things here. So they screw out. This thing here was used to, to get those out. Next thing I need is these clamps those you can get from anywhere but i got these from super cheap these came in a pack of three from super cheap now i'm going to need two of those to tie off the clamps in a moment but the most important thing i needed here was this big bloody socket extension because so you can see there there's that bolt through there i got to do and there's also one through there i hope you can see on the gopro which is the top two bolts in the head exchanger i measured it out it's about 25 centimeters just out there but 30 centimeter extension is what you need so went down to bunnings and picked up one of these socket extensions this is a 25 centimeter one with my other little attachments here it was enough should be enough for me to get in there now and also pick myself up a 15 mil spanner for the bash plate bolts i felt like i had every other size spanner in the world 
except the one I need it, so I'll use the shifter for those. But now I've got all these tools here, I should be right to get into this. These ones here I just cut because we want to make it two. So I'm going to poke him through that little gap up there. I'll show you where it's going to come out in a sec. They come out here along the chassis rail. Now I'm just going to feed them through here behind all the, the steering there. Now, I'm going to put a cable tie through here. And these ones here, I'm just going to leave hanging for the moment. But before I do that, I am going to clamp off the hoses. But when I undo the head exchanger there, I've got a drip tray there. So I expect to start losing some fluid out of there. The two hoses that go to the heat exchanger are this one here and then there's another one just next to it. There we go, so I got those two closed off there, which should prevent a bit of oil from coming out. And now you can see it better, that bolt there, that bolt there. The heat exchanger there that's what we're trying to get out next job now is so these two hoses here in the heat exchanger there's a clamp there and there's a clamp there so i'm just going to unclamp them okay so now i've undone these clamps here so that one's off and that one's off which will allow, allow me to get those hoses undone but the next challenge for me is there's a screw up in there so that one there I need to undo to take off this bracket here. Now he's undone. Okay, so you can see there we've got the heat exchanger out. I have uh, cleaned it up here. I would recommend having a drip tray here because there was a bit of coiling and transmission fluid coming out there. So what we've got now is the hose there and that hose there. They were the two connected to the heat exchanger. My suggestion is undo those before you undo the heat exchanger because it was like they are pretty firm and it's a very tight fit trying to get the heat exchanger out of here. As the instructions say, it is very tight but it can be done and that was exactly what I found. I had to sort of wiggle it around and sort of find the, the right angle but I finally got him out here. Next up is the J pipe and the two clamps. So J pipe here. It's one clamp. And this is going to go back on to these two hoses here. So next job is, once you've got those done, should be able to release these hose clamps that I had up here. The next bit is with this P clamp here, I'm going to fit this one on the main body here. There you go, he just fixed on that one there, nice and easy. That was just one of the bolts that I took off from the heat exchanger before, and now he's fixed on there. Now I've just got to take off the bracket off the heat exchanger. So here we've got the heat exchanger, but we want this bracket off here to proceed to the next point. So I'm just going to undo these split pins here and take this off. There we go, got him. So now, Time to take these two bits here because these two are going to go in these two holes up here which I'll show you in a sec. So these are going to go in there. Look at that. So there you go, you can see how he's fixed on there. 
And now, these two hoes are going to cut to length and I'm going to fix those on that. Okay, so, see he's fixed on there now. Thanks to that bolt there. See, they've got the clamps on there, conduit up there. I've just cable tied them up there. J-pipe is fixed. Now it's just trying to check the oil level via the bung, which I think is that one there. But firstly, we're going to turn the car on to get the oil running before we get out there because the guys at Automated Transmissions told me that if that wasn't done up and you start the car, uh, he has seen oil sort of splash out of there, but we'll do that now. Now the thermostat is under the driver's side under here, but the, itcher, the picture and the instructions will show you. Essentially it comes out, it's a 19 mil socket on that one. That's the dipstick there. So start the car up and get it in idle. And you want it to be at the top of the B. You see the dipstick there, there's a B on the top there. Put the dipstick, dipstick back in and we'll put the bolt back on. Now I can cut these cable ties here before I fix this on for good. Now I'm pretty happy with the clearance on this side here. It's away from the belts and all the running gear and it's nicely tucked away out of the way there. Now the only bit I didn't show you there at the end of the video was me putting the bash plates or skid plates back under the car, bolting them on and putting this cover back on, was, which was all fairly simple stuff to be honest with you. But I guess the real question is, now that we've done a three and a half thousand K drive, how did it perform? What happened? What was it like? Now we're actually really fortunate to be able to give this the proper test because we went through a hill and a mountain range that was fairly significant with some big, massive, long, steep climbs. You know, like there was one climb that probably went for about 10 minutes to be honest with you. And then, you know, the climbs and descents and, you know, hills and that sort of stuff continued for quite a while. So. There was every chance for this to get hot and overheat. I guess to be honest with you, for me, I was a little bit nervous because I'd heard so many things, but while I'd heard all the things that had happened with people, I guess I pretty quickly forgot about, you know, what I was told this thing could do. And the reality was I had no problems at all. No sort of electronic issues or alarms or any sort of performance concerns whatsoever the car performed exactly as it was supposed to there was nothing that happened that made me think something wasn't right that's why you would you know spend the money to get something like this put on your car whether you want to do it yourself like i did remembering i can be handy with things but when it comes to mechanical stuff i generally try and steer clear of that sort of stuff because when it comes to mechanical performance i don't want there to be any compromise and again, thank you to Adam and the team at Wholesale Automatic Transmissions. In uh, Victoria there, definitely recommend, you know, something like this for you, considering my own experience. And again, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear about them, whether it's questions or, you know, your own experiences or, or concerns, or if there was something I missed. Next question is, what's coming up next in the build series? Chuck in the comments to let me know what you think it is. There's quite a few things that it could be, that's for sure, but would love to hear your thoughts. Now, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our channel. If you want to see more of this stuff, there is definitely more of this type of stuff coming, but there is also similar and camping off-roading sort of stuff we have done in the past, and you know, I'm hoping there's something for you to enjoy. So I reckon I'll wrap him up here. I'm Diesel for Getting Around Oz, camper trailer traveling. We'll catch you in the next one. Hooroo.